What up, though, y'all? Welcome to another episode of the Three on Three Pod, where three hosts give you three very di- different points of perspective on the game of basketball. We're talking WNBA, we're talking NBA, college basketball, you name it. And for the second week in a row, we're on a winning streak, baby. We got Didi in the house. Yeah, H Town, and then we got Tarika as well. Hey, yo, I noticed how you opened up the show with "What up, though?" Am I rubbing off on you, Chris? I'll okay. rub it off you, on you. You know Chris. what? I didn't. You know what's funny? I didn't even know. I didn't even realize you. that. <laughs> but <laughs> see, we've been talking so much. You know, we've been on this podcast all the time. That that's what happens. I love it. I love it. You know what? I love it too. And I don't. I don't know if y'all love this, but uh, we got to talk about how the Sixers. Whooped up on the Lakers and LeBron. Calm down. Calm down. 44. Down. You know what, Didi? When LeBron gets smoked, we got to talk about it. Just like if, if Jordan gets smoked, we got to talk about it. I'm sorry. I love LeBron, but I'm sorry. We just have to address it. I and, just, yeah. We don't need to talk about LeBron go ahead. Like that or the Lakers. I mean, but I understand. I understand the infatuation with LeBron and the Lakers losing cool, but like everybody loses, y'all. Can we just like it's a loss, chop it up and brush it under the rug and keep it pushing? No. No, we can't chop it up and brush it under the rug and keep it pushing. We can't because LeBron has never lost by that much in their lives. And I recall being one of the few people in the world who talked about how much I trusted this team without James Harden. And that just looks so right. I can't, I can't stand the Leo in me is just thrilled at how right I look right now. Keep the party going, Philly. Keep the party going. You're a Leo team. I, I, I am. Oh my I God. am. Yeah. You couldn't tell? We're going to talk about that later. We're going to talk about that later. But Ooh, honestly, here y'all go. you can't be shocked. You cannot be shocked <laughs> if 76 is playing like this, you guys. Tyrese Maxey is playing out of his mind. Like, I don't even know who this guy is. He's playing out of his mind. Oh, Didi, you don't know basketball if you say things like that. Ah! You don't know? <laughs> you don't know? <laughs> you, don't know. <laughs> you, don't, you don't know basketball if you say things like that. No, of course not. That's crazy. Only people who don't know basketball would say something so common sensely right. But go ahead. You got it. You don't, you don't know. I'm in awe right now. Like, that's all I can say. That's how you know it's that serious. Because I'm in awe. Like, if I am speechless, just know that you have surpassed the right here. The bar is here. He has surpassed it. I'm like, all right. Yeah. I'm a fan. Snaps to Tyrese. You got to. You got to be a fan, man. The dude is balling, cooking up everything and anything. And on the other side, though, with LeBron and Lakers, you the fact that one of the Sixers players, I forgot his name, said Anthony Davis is a flopper. So before the game, and this is how the Lakers respond. I don't know, Didi. You, it's looking yeah. like the Lakers are some punks. And, and, and that game, you know, like oh. they just let the Sixers walk all over them and stomp all their necks. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I, you, can't. you see, this is where we're going to agree here. Um, AD... Me and AD, we really, like, we don't really get along all the time because of that reason. So, like, I understand why we could be looked at as punks with AD. And, like, LeBron every now and then, isn't he known for his, like, meme of him, like, you know what I mean? So, like, I just, I feel like we're a little sensitive. I'm okay with that, though, because my sensitive, they're going to come at when it's supposed to come. When they need to come, they're going to do it. Like, I, I, saw, I, that's all I care about is that when the time is here and I need them to show out, they show out and show up. So that's why I'm saying this is just a game. Like, I'm cool with seeing it. Cool, it happened. Go Sixers for being the first team to kill LeBron the way they killed them. Now we can move on. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. And in that film room, that film room is not going to be nice. Um, <laughs> not a nice at all for the Lakers. But what is nice, y'all, is the Orlando Magic. They have come out the gate and are currently the second place team in the Eastern Conference. They're on a seven game winning streak. And in that, in that winning streak, they've beaten the Boston Celtics, they've also beaten defending champs. The Denver Nuggets. But for real, though, th- this is the team, y'all, that is made up of primarily 
young cats. They do not have a whole lot of veteran experience, right? Outside for a few guys, you, you think about guys like Joe Ingles, you know, Gary Harris, but they are led by Paolo Bencaro, right? Jalen Suggs, you got Franz Wagner and his brother coming off the bench, Mo, Cole Anthony, UNC. That's what impresses me the most because they have a group of young guys who buy in to the system that head coach Jamal Mosley is leading. And the way they're winning is through forcing turnovers. They are ranked number one in forced turnovers right now as of this taping. Mm -hmm. That does not always happen. Usually doesn't happen for a young squad, in my opinion, because they can be very reckless or they're not bought in on the defensive side of things. Um, but I got to tell you, I'm really enjoying what we've seen from this collection, this team, in terms of how they share the ball. And yep. I don't know how long it's going to last, but the Magic doing well and playing high-level basketball, that gives me joy, Tarika. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm in. What's crazy is I had honestly forgotten about this team. Like, and I don't even mean that to be like disrespectful. I'm just saying like, when you think about the teams recently that you're talking about going through rebuilding phases and things like that, Orlando was kind of an afterthought. Like I had just forgot about this team. So to your point about Jamal Mosley, I think what he's doing is just so exciting. And it really speaks to what can happen when you have a team full of players that really buy into what the coach is selling. Like this is a prime example of what it actually looks like. Um, and a bigger, I think an even bigger example of what grit looks like, especially when you have someone that players relate to. So if you, you know, if you guys remember last year, there was like this wave of young black head coaches that were hired at the end of the season when there were a lot of openings. And Mosley was obviously one of those um, after spending years as an assistant in Denver, years as an assistant in Cleveland, then he was in Dallas. So like this kind of success for him, I think is what we fight for when we're continuing to say there needs to be more black head coaches. There needs to be more people who resonate with players, people who players can feel like, they can believe in. Um, and I really love that. I think that is just so exciting um, for this team. Um, I really think it gives opportunities for more coaches that were in his position um, to, to be able to get this kind um, of opportunity um, down the line if they can see the kind of success that a coach can have and how you can relate to players. Um, but at the same time, I really feel like this team is just getting started, right? Seven game win streak. Um, it, it hasn't been impressive just because of the teams that they've beaten. I think it's been impressive because of how they're doing it, like the fashion in which they're doing it. You mentioned Paolo Bencaro. First of all, I've been a Paolo Bencaro fan ever since he switched his whole demeanor for Formula One. OK, he went to Formula One and they this man was Patrick Mahomes. Oh, yeah. And he's like, what, bro? <laughs> Immediately after that, the very next year, yo, bro had the braids. Bro was yeah. like, like, bro, listen, you know who I am? I'm, I'm, I'm the, it. I am it. I am him. Okay. And the respect that he got at Formula One ever since then was so, I've been a fan. I, I just eliminated Duke and everything else. I eliminated all of that. And I was like, that's that guy right there. So I've been um, a, a big fan of him, but I really see like that he's taking it to the next to the next level. During that four game stretch last week, um, he led the team in scoring once, led the team in rebounding once, led the team in assist once, scored twenty plus points in every game. So like when you get that kind of confidence and then you tie that in with Mo coming off the bench, giving you 27, Cole Anthony coming off the bench, giving you another 30. And then you add the in season tournament that so many people questioned as if it ain't the WNBA's commissioner's cup. And then add that to an exciting young team that has something to play for. Like you need to be worried about Orlando right now. You need to be worried. I could really could not agree. I think the most exciting thing about them is literally the way 
the scoring is so spread out. You have five people on that team averaging double figures. Like, that's insane. And so within any night, you don't know what player is about to go off on you. So I think that's what makes them so dangerous as well is they share the ball so well. And like you said, I think the biggest thing both of y'all said is that they're bought in. Like, they're so going for what Mosley is talking about. And that's a dangerous team whenever everybody's on the same accord, on the same page. Like, that's such a dangerous team to play against because – their backs against the wall and they know they got each other. Like it's a different, it's a different type of camaraderie whenever you have a team that's bought into the coach, listening to the coach on top of playing defense. What is y'all? Y'all know I'm gonna play yep. defense. I get real and and, and will. Like, I'm just so excited when a team is like locked in, talking. Like I literally turned to one of their games, you guys, and I felt like I was watching a uh, AAU tournament. Like you know, help, 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 side, help, right. side. And I'm like, you can see their mouths moving. Like it's so exciting to see how excited they are on defense. And like you said, the grit that they come with defensively, like it's zero to none. So to see mm-hmm. this at the beginning, like you said, this is just the beginning for them. It's so exciting to see what is going to happen because they're such a young team. And then you have the vets coming off the bench and Cole Anthony that is doing what he's supposed to do. So it's super exciting to see what they are doing. And I'm a fan of Orlando right now. It's like you said, it's a good time when Orlando was playing well. When we got Orlando playing well, it's a good time of basketball. Absolutely. You know, I need uh, some more of those Dwight Howard uh, T-Mac years. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Those, those teams are really fun to watch. Of course, it's more spread out this time. But to your point, Didi, about all these players, you know, you know, yelling help, help, and saying, yeah, you got this man, you got that guy. Like – Jamal Mosley actually installed a bell in the practice court that gets wrong whenever a player makes a hustle play, like taking a charge, deflecting a pass, diving on the court. And it may seem cheesy, but those sort of sorts of things really can be impactful to the squad because it's like, all right, this is what we're doing. This is our philosophy. And we're going to reward you when it happens. So when it comes game time, you locked and loaded. Um, Mm -hmm. And, I don't know if it was you, Tariq, or Didi, but the fact that there's no player who's averaging more than 20 points is insane. This season, they got like everybody. It don't matter. I was like, okay, you got it. Oh, you got crazy. It. I got it. That that's impressive. Crazy, crazy. Like, Sharing the ball is crazy. Like when teams do it and they do it effectively and efficiently, like that is probably some of the scariest ball that you can watch. Because at the like, you literally don't know where your um, you don't know where your threat is going to come from, and it's even better when not only are you sharing the ball, but everybody has the capability, so yeah. everybody can score. You know what I mean? Everybody has the opportunity to really provide a, a, a mid range or or drive for you or hold down the basket. Like it is, it's fun. It's just fun to watch. Orlando right now. I literally just want to give flowers back to Mosley, y'all. Because that, it starts with him. I just want, I hope that we are all, I know we're all on the same page because we all said the same thing. And I feel like that is what this segment is about. It's about the culture he's instilled and the, what he's given them. Like he's given them something to believe in. And it's super exciting to watch. I love seeing a young team. And I honestly also wanted to say that I feel like it's because egos haven't gotten involved yet. These are young. These are young kids. So, like, hey, who's to say in two, three more years, Paolo don't think he deserve all the shots and they're trying to get rid of people and stuff. So they're young. It's a young team. And this is what happens when a young team gets together with a coach that gives them something to play for, period. Now, when you talk about sharing the ball, Dee, Dee mm-hmm. it kind of brings me to – another team that <laughs> they, they I don't know if we can say they share the ball because <laughs> really, I really only see one person taking all the shots <laughs> that's all I said Chris you feel me they, oh, only one person be taking all the shots okay Bruh. but <laughs> but but so earlier this season Um, Iowa took a very nasty loss to Kansas State and social media, social media, God bless y'all. They did not hesitate to let Iowa know about it either. When I tell you that energy, they be matching energy on social media. They be matching energy, right? So, um, but a couple of days ago on Sunday, Iowa got their lick back 
and they beat number 16 Kansas State with basketball star Caitlin Clark scoring 32 points. Um, it was her 40th 30 plus point game. And let's just say like that stat in itself is insane. Okay. 40, 30 plus point games, like girl, your grind is amazing. And so to do that and to do that on the road after having one of the worst games of your career against the Wildcats previously, it is so super commendable. So I give her a lot of props for that. But I think for me, the difference in this win versus the loss was that there was more sharing of the ball. This felt more like a team effort. You had 13 points from Molly Davis. You had another 30, another double double from Kate Martin. So this is the kind of basketball that you want to see early um, in the season, starting to get familiar, starting to play with a bit more consistency, starting to share the ball. The problem with this Iowa team is that we don't always get that kind of shared responsibility from Iowa. Like, yeah, Caitlin had 32 points, but how many shots did she take? right or how many shots does she continuously take in a regular game it leads me to question quite honestly what is the sustainability gonna be for that kind of a team in this kind of a league where you've got you know south carolina beating teams 101 to 90 to 19 when you've got you know you still see teams like ucla that have always kind of been in the mix continuing to get stronger when you've got um god so like i'm bouncing them off where you can see a, a hannah um hidalgo from Notre dame like leading her team even without olivia miles and honey when olivia miles come back y'all better watch out for Notre dame so when you see all of this and you start to really, as we've discussed, think about the parity that's happening in women's basketball in general, like from the W to the NCAA, the parity is crazy and I love it. But Didi, you've played in this, you know, you've played NCAA ball. You're a, a national champion. You know what it takes to win at the highest level. You better flex. Girl, you better flex. You better flex. Flex. Even if women are national champion. <laughs> flex when I say national champion but when you look at someone like a Caitlin Clark who kind of and this is just the appearance so right. disclaimer I'm not saying she her team that Lisa is telling her she needs to do it all or that her teammates are saying she needs to do it all but the appearance is if Caitlin doesn't do it all this team doesn't have the other offensive production to win how sustainable can that be when you look at how difficult this 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 team this league is becoming um every day gone game yeah i i don't know i just feel like this the ability for her to come in day in and day out like and perform like that is a hard like it's hard to live up to that like that's a you're playing 40 minutes a game you're expected to give dang near a triple double every game for your team to win i think that I was recruiting process has got to be better or it had, it should have been better by now, especially with the attention Caitlin Clark has brought to this school. I feel like they should have gotten a, a better recruiting class and they have brought in the last couple of years. Like it makes zero sense to me why it's so hard to attract people to this school. Like I'm kind of confused and I feel like that should be something looked into. Why? Are we not bringing in different recruits or bringing in stronger players that can help take some pressure off for Caitlin? Like you, I love seeing her play. I will say I love watching Caitlin Clark play. It's it's exciting. It's exciting basketball, and she's really good at what she does. It's just like you should not be expected to do that day in and day out. And I feel like that alone is enough pressure when you're playing against the teams like the South Carolinas, the UCLA's, the LSU's, or whoever it may be. It's like. There's so much firepower on all those teams. Like, mm -hmm. how do you expect to come back with one player and hopefully you get a supporting cast here and a supporting cast there? Like, hopefully. You're going off of hope every game. Like, I feel like that's so stressful for her. And granted, she wears it well. She wears stress amazing. <laughs> but it's just like, is it going to last all the way to the NCAA tournament? Like, is it going to get you all the way through the South Carolinas of the world? Like, where they have so many people on this team like it gets to the point for me like how we we're just talking about orlando you have five people in double figures it's a different game it's an easier game whereas with iowa it's like you know 
there's one person on this court that if I slow this one person down, we're going to win. Like, it might be mm-hmm. a little hard to slow this one person down, but it's like, if I send all three people running up and down with her, it's like, I'm going to tire her out. And it's, I'm probably going to win this game nine times out of ten. I feel like that is a stressor for I would game in and game out. Like, that is stressful. Chris, I got a question for you. Do you trust Iowa as we get closer and deeper into the season? Do you feel like if one person has to do this every single game and has every single game aside from talent, do you trust this team? No. The answer is no. Of course, it's still very early, so things can change. They can work on their chemistry and finding who needs to step up and be allowed to share some more of the responsibility. But the reason why they were so successful last year, guys, was because not only did they have a generational player in Caitlin Clark, but Monica Sanazo, Sanano down low. She took a load off of Caitlin, even though Caitlin, you know, still was going bonkers. But having that post presence, somebody who can make things easier for you and who can bang it down low, that really opened up things. This year, you got Hannah Stolke right down low. You have good men. They're not Monica. And we talk about, you know, Kate Martin or Molly Davis. They, they're very streaky. So mm-hmm. what, what happened last year against South Carolina, they did not have the, the shooters that they have now. That's one of the reasons why I was able to win. This year, we see, as Brenda Freeze pointed out, after Maryland lost, their offense is probably better than it was last year because they don't have to rely on Leah Boston. So to your point, Tarika, about the South Carolinas of the world, the, the Notre Dames, the UCLAs, they have so much more talent spread around that, no, I do not trust them to get it done. And I think it's going to wear on Kaylin a lot, not just emotionally, because we've seen her, you know, get very frustrated and pushing people, you know, at these, you know, tournaments um, and getting, I won't say out of character, but just letting her emotions get the best of her sometimes. Um, the, and her legs are going to be tired. So I don't, I don't, I don't trust them. And. The thing, the thing that's interesting, what Aditi brought up about the recruiting classes, not so much, is you ain't have no big transfers come in, first off. Let's talk about that. In the age where the, tr- the transfer portal is heavy as hell and everybody's coming in and out, how come nobody want to play that? You see, and that's pod? why I supported, I supported her going to Iowa. Like, go, go to a team where you can make it your own. The co- coach gives you the reins, gives you the team. I, I love that. It's yeah. just like, at some point, like, you bring in your friends. Where are your basketball friends? Like, get somebody to come play with you. Come on. Like, let's go. Let's go just win a chip together. Let's do it for one time for the one time. You know, I expected that by now. Where is they in Indi- They in Indiana. They in, <laughs> they in South Dakota. <laughs> like, they're, they're in Texas. They are not in Iowa. Okay. The Iowa Caitlin is out there by herself. She ain't even got her girl Ashley Jones out there at Iowa State no more. Like she just is she just in Des Moines by her damn no. Okay. And that is what it is. It just kind of is what it is. And we we are not going to Iowa. <laughs> we're not doing that. So we're, that's not happening. So you know I have never, so I, I've never been to Iowa. I've never been to, and I have to go. I have a goal of going to all 50 states before I turn 50. I'm 39. I've been to like 30. So I've got to go to Iowa, but honey, I ain't nobody trying to be out there. But to, I, I will add this though. I think this year is going to show us a lot of how important recruiting is on two sides, right? Number one, we look at, you know, because again, South Carolina feels like the standard right now. You look at South Carolina, and I, I have called her previously like Dawn State, like Saban, because for a time when you were at Alabama, it didn't matter who graduated or who got drafted. Like Nick Saban was just bringing in a new batch, and it was just like, well, damn, y'all ain't gonna never not be good, right? That's how it feels in South Carolina. Like, yes, the the freshies held it down so hardcore last year as singers. But what you didn't realize is that she had a whole nother group 
that was back there in the wings waiting to just be the man. And they are right now, right? So you ha- they are. So you have to um you have to think about that. But at the same time, I feel like Iowa and Yukon are showing you what happened when you can't really necessarily go off name anymore, right? So I don't think, I I feel like, I know it's a huge loss for UConn to lose AZ Fudd and all of my prayers go out to her. I I mean, it sucks to to lose someone to an injury, but specifically for her and all of the things she's had to battle back to get back and the injuries she's had to endure, like it's it's really heartbreaking. Um, I really think all of us wanted a chance to see what this UConn team could really look like with a healthy Paige and a healthy Hazy and and Aaliyah Edwards. Like we wanted to see what all of that was going to produce. And unfortunately, we still aren't going to be able to see that. Um, But Paige is continuing to play like Paige. I feel like she's even gotten ridiculously better. Yeah. But everybody else on the team kind of feels like they regressed a little bit. And so here you are again at another team with another situation where you can't put it all on one player. Paige can't win it by herself. Not the way that this league has evolved. Not the way that college basketball has evolved. And I ain't even, we didn't even mention Juju. Right. Yeah. We ain't, on, we, ain't went, we ain't went went to USC. We ain't even got there. Cause Ju- Juju like, bro, give me this national player of the year now. Give me this national yeah. freshman of the year yeah, now. Like right. we haven't like give me both of them. She's coming for all the things. Do you hear me? All the things. So I just think to your point, it just continues to add value to how important a good recruiting class is and just having additional players to support your star. Um, Cause I think they're asking something of some of these other young women at Iowa that they just might not be able to provide consistently. There's a certain ceiling that, that they have. And it goes back to one, how many nights are you going to get this, you know, from Molly Davis or Kate Martin. And then yeah. two, when is coach Lisa Bluter going to change her, approach to recruiting kid recruiting kids you know from all over um that that's something that has to be addressed otherwise once caitlin leaves oh baby oh oh man oh baby yeah what? yeah it's, it's not gonna yeah. be pretty it's not gonna be pretty Dee Dee. definitely gonna be a mess that's yeah that's we can't even I don't even want to look that far because if she isn't recruiting and getting attracting attention while Caitlin Clark is here when Caitlin Clark leaves what are we gonna do like this this is where you're supposed to capitalize off of having the star here you're supposed to be able to attract this is a light bring people to the light she didn't do that and that I feel like that says a lot about her recruiting and that is not even on her that's on her her assistant coaches right, her players saying. like this is a lot about the organization like it's something going on that needs to be talked about period and they need to go have team meetings multiple of them because you've missed out on four years of bringing in supporting cast and now it's literally dwindling like when you wanted this five second of fame with one person when you could have just built like generational legendary you could have built like a whole thing going on she a dynasty and she didn't she didn't even it's like they didn't try almost like i would have expected a lot more but it's okay it's okay so coming off of um, what should have been for most people an amazing Thanksgiving break, um, we had some very interesting news come out of the NBA. So the NBA is looking into allegations of Oklahoma City Thunder guard Josh Giddy um, about him possibly having an improper relationship with an underage girl. So the NBA confirmed on Friday that they are investigating as of right now. No charges have been filed. No, um, there is no police involvement into anything. But there was a post that was posted um, in which a girl, um, she was an anonymous social media, it was an anonymous social media user, but they posted saying that a girl who had been in videos and photographs with um, Oklahoma City Thunder guard Josh Giddy, and who had also said that um, in some of the videos, um, some of the mouthing and some of the things you can hear him saying um, alludes to the fact that that was his girlfriend. Um, this user said that the 
the young girl was a high school junior at that time. Now, again, those that post has been deleted. Um, Giddy has now put his comment restrictions on his Instagram, so you can't comment on certain things. Um, they started circulating on Twitter um, last week, Wednesday. Um, and I mean, it was showing him in multiple locations with this one girl in question. Again, there was one video in which, you know, it looks like he may have been talking to her brother and he's saying some things like, oh, I'm here with your beautiful sister. Um, there's another video where it feels like he's like at a nightclub and he's over the phone saying, yeah, you know, we're in front of the club. It's me and my girl. Um, so there's this appearance that this girl is or was giddy's girlfriend um what isn't clear is when the videos or photos were taken um whether or not um this is recent or old like some those kinds of questions and just have not been able to be answered um he has not commented on it he has refused to comment on it at press conferences um the coach has refused to to really comment on it and address it as a matter of fact he's still playing it hasn't affected his basketball um status at all and in fact i want to quote um by saying um that coach you know mark said hey giddy will continue to play there's no change in status from a basketball standpoint i still have no comment on anything else just with the information that we have at this point that's the decision that we've made it's really not even a decision to be obvious with you it's obviously a league matter and the ball is in their court at this point so um some people have made mention of it. There hasn't been a lot to go on for a lot of analysts to really be able to delve into an opinion. But I think the overall thought process and the overall um, thinking in this is just, first of all, this man was 21 years old when he was drafted into the NBA. He was drafted in the first round, a lottery pick, sixth at that, and he's Australian, right? So me bringing up him being Australian is because I know that in different countries, there are different rules, right? There are some people who feel like, you know, dating someone of a certain age. I've seen this before in Latin America where they're like, you know, dating people of a certain age is accepted in certain cultures and certain countries and certain things. So we don't know again how old he was or she was at the time of these videos. But if, if this was a grown man dating a junior in high school, that is some very serious and very weird shit and inappropriate shit and nasty shit. For real, for real. Now, Didi, you are currently in Australia. You play for the Sydney Flame. I'm pretty sure. Do you not play for the Sydney Flame? Did I say Sydney yes, Flame? That's what I'm oh my god this woman didn't mess around and learn oh, some damn okay. lingo oh, now she can't control i just want to throw out here as a disclaimer that when we record this podcast it is like around midnight one o'clock in the morning for dd she's delirious right now so please excuse her but <laughs> what how how are we laughing at such a very serious topic right now um but like what's the before, you know, Chris and I really like even get deep into this shit. Like right. what's the, what's the, what's the, what's the vibe in the atmosphere? Cause I'm sure this story is a story in Australia. It's definitely a story. He's very well known. Like you said, he was drafted in the first round. He was a lottery pick. So it's like, this is like Australia's like their person. Like he's in the NBA. So like I walked down to breakfast one day and everybody's talking about the same thing and it's getting real serious and like, their accents are so thick sometimes that I kind of just zone out. Like, I'm like, if it's important, I'll lock in. But they kept talking about it. So I'm like, yo, what are we talking about? And then finally, Josh Giddy, mate. And I'm like, what's going on with Josh Giddy, mate? So I'm sitting there and they're telling me that all this, this is the story, basically, that what you just said, and he was with a minor and all this stuff. And they, I'm, they don't, they didn't really like agree with it. They did, they were upset. They were like, Diddy, no, like, that's not okay. That's not okay. And I'm just like, me, like for me being the person that I am, it's just like, there's so many sides to stories. And I hate that it's all, like social media bothers me because you only get one side of, you get a half of it, not even one side, you get a piece of stuff and then people just run with it. Like that's just what social media is now. And so like, regardless, 
dating an underage person is wrong. And that is the, the problem here is that if she was a minor, which apparently she was, and that was wrong. And the fact that I feel like for me, it's like the NBA, the team, whatever is like putting that they try to brush it under the rug and let them keep playing. Like it's an afterthought for them. Like that's where it becomes a problem in my opinion. Like, so are we not going to ever address it? Is it just going to like fall, go under the rug and never be news ever again. And we're not going to get to the bottom of it. Like granted, that's none of our business. That That's his business and that he needs to be taken care of. But it seems as if it's not being taken care of. Like, can we, are we going to figure out what was going on? Are we going to, it's like, it's a slap on the wrist and go keep doing what about your day. Like, that's not okay. So being in Australia, people are talking about it and they don't agree with it. And I only say that because, you know, their age requirement is 18 for everything. Like, whereas we're 21. So if anybody was going to think it was okay, it was going to be these Australians out here. And they're still like, um, it's nasty. 15 or 16. Yeah. Like that's, that's not okay. So period. I feel like that is, that's the story and that's the T and nobody, I feel like the NBA needs to, zoom in magnify and figure some stuff out instead of just sitting there letting them play letting them and if you do let them play then it's like something should be done it's not just let them play and we'll figure it out after like i understand he's a great player i understand okc needs him it's just like there is a whole there's a whole legal issue going on right now like that's illegal right so and Tariq, i just want to point out uh so he was 19 when he was drafted not not 21 so he He's 21 now. I thought it was 21 when he was. Oh, he's 21 now. That's right. You're he's right. 21 now. Just want to make sure we had that correct. Uh, but, you know, to Diddy's point, yeah, the fact that the league is just saying, okay, we're doing an investigation. He'll continue to play the Thunder, you know, say what they say. We are comfortable, you know, with the information we have playing him. Although, when they, you brought up the point that, yeah, it wasn't really a decision. Um, and then later, one of the Thunder uh, spokesperson, PR person was like, the reason why he said that is because the league is handling it, so which tells me, okay, maybe they don't have as much information as they let us on to believe. And what I'm reminded of is a situation in the MLB with Wander Franco with the Tampa Bay Rays. He was investigated. He's still on administrative leave for having relationships with underage girls, allegedly. Mm -hmm. The the and the difference is the women or the girls went to the police uh, for that, for these relationships or relations that he was having with them. That's not happening as far as I know with this girl. So right. that is the difference, but it's still something very serious. And yes, you know, you're innocent until proven guilty in you know, law of court, but you can't just, this isn't as if he was stealing some DVDs or, bootleg and deep this is something that shows the the lack of maturation the lack of maturity and disgustingness um potentially from an nba player who let's be real y'all he could have any woman he wants at his age There's or that. above so why would you even even if because i remember y'all was bringing this up our producer in Oklahoma City, uh, the age of consent is 16. So even if she's 16, what, bro, you got all the women you could ask for, and you dealing with a 16 year old? There, there's not even a. What do you have in common? The brain That's it for me. Aspect. And, mm -hmm. and Tariq, I know you know you got some thoughts on this, but that part right there needs to be talked about more because sometimes the the young lady or the young woman or the young man whoever it is they don't even have the the understanding or the the mental capacity to understand what is going on when they're dealing with such an older individual yep yep and that is essentially grooming i mean calling a spade a spade that's essentially grooming you are grooming this young woman in 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 the steps of doing saying my manipulation kind of thing and again this is this is just an assumption this is just there's nothing that has been proven there we again we don't know the time that this happened we don't know for sure so 
I'm not accusing you specifically of this. My comments are in the event that these things are true. Mm -hmm. In the event that these things are true, this is nasty. You're a grown ass man. There's nothing that should be attractive to you about a 16 year old girl. Nothing. Your brain development isn't there. You have different responsibilities. You have different um, sets of of friends like there's nothing and and you know when I think about that because I'm a step parent and so I know I don't look a day over 12 but I'm a step parent and my daughter my 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 bonus daughter is 16 this year she turned 16 in May of this year and all I can think about is me finding out that some 21 year old dude is is dating her or even at 19, even at 19, at 19 years old, I know you will look on the surface and say, hey, it's three years. 30 to 33, it's just three years. 37 to 40, it's just three years. But the difference in what you're doing, where you are in life, what your responsibilities are, and your legal responsibilities between 16 and 19, very different at 16 you're a junior in high school at 19 you're at least a sophomore in college possibly your responsibilities are different your set of friends your access those things are different so what are you seeing like what are you where, where is this so if this is happening now at 21 you're essentially you're a pedophile to me right yep that essentially yep. you're a pedophile to me so i am going to pray that that this was years ago, that these pictures and videos are old, that this is not currently happening because I can't imagine, actually, let me not lie. I can't imagine the NBA not doing shit because last time I checked, last time I checked, Miles Bridges was still playing. Girl. Hold up, hold last up, time, hold up. Last time, last time I checked, last time I checked, my, last time I checked, my man is in is in is, is is in Charlotte right now, trying to turn the team around, telling folks that he hopes that if he wins enough, they will forget that he jumped on his girlfriend in front of his kids, threw pool balls at her car while her kids were in the car after having already had a restraining order to not be around her in the first place. So I can absolutely imagine that if this turns out to be true, the NBA doesn't do a damn thing because this is what they do. They don't do, they, they, this is what they do. Listen. I don't know how we as female fans even continue to like, this is the NBA is clearly an addiction clearly because I don't even know. And I'm questioning myself how we even still support this shit because the truth is they are horrible for female fans. They are horrible to us. They give us and show us all the time that they do not care about their female fan base by the way they continually allow men and NBA players to get away with the shit they get away with. They don't care about us. And we still, like my girl say, like my girl Yvette saying baby boy, and we still hear stupid sticking to your ass. Stupid. Just stupid. Stupid. It, it's I'm crazy. With you, right? I'm with you, right? That's literally what I was gonna say. It's like there's no respect for women. That's all I have to say. There's just no respect, and it's, un it's super unfortunate. But it's like it's so evident. Like it's so loudly. Like we don't give a shit. And it's like, oh, we're gonna sit here and turn the TV on again, and we're, we're gonna, just gonna watch. Throw ourselves at you whenever we see you in the club again. Like that's just and that. I mean, it makes you kind of look at just us as individuals like that like what are we doing as women like we have yep. to have more respect for ourselves now like once we see that this is happening and that's a different more deeper conversation that i can talk about for decades like it's just a problem it's a huge problem and the other thing that really upsets me you talk about miles bridges uh still being an nba tarika this is an organization who still parades around and honors Carl Malone, who got a 13 year old pregnant when he was 20 years old. And they still put him on a pedestal where they're acknowledging and glorifying his nasty ass. So it's not surprising. And this is something that 
you guys have all touched on. It's not surprising because they've shown again and again who they are, but it's just incredibly upsetting because it's as if, yeah, we know y'all motherfuckers ain't going to stop watching us. So you can get all mad and be on Twitter, whatever, and speak your mind. But in a day, you're going to turn on that TV. You're going to be watching the Hornets. You're going to be watching the Thunder. Why? Because you love basketball so much. So I, I yeah. It is, I, yeah, it is what it is. But you know what I can say about you, Chris, though? What I can say is while the NBA has a disrespect for women, you have the utmost respect for women. So much that you went at Des Bryant in defense of a woman. Y'all, wait till we come back. So I was scrolling through my Twitter yesterday, just having a scroll. And I came across, I, I came across a tweet from one said receiver with a drop ball that we still trying to figure out if it's a pass or not a pass. It was a catch or not a catch, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so I come across this, this, this tweet and the tweet is from Des Bryant who was talking about ESPN's Malika Andrews. And so, you know, yesterday Malika Andrews was on NBA Today um, and was talking about the situation with Josh Giddy. And so Dez responds and says, Malika, you went out of your way to crucify Brandon Miller on draft day over something he didn't do. Why haven't you said nothing about Josh Giddy? I advise you not to make this a black or white thing. Your parents really raised you wrong. And just because you went to a private school, don't make you better. You appeal and I know you're kind. You just a puppet. I don't know how a former or current NBA player could sit there across from you and look at you with some kind of respect. Dez went hard for Malika. Went hard. And so my boy Chris said, what you not gonna do is be coming for Malika or any other female on this site over some dumb shit when you got more smoke Chris said, how you gonna have more smoke for Malika Andrews than Josh Giddy, who got dating and underage girl allegations the NBA is looking into? With the gift, with the gift, like, man, what, what you doing, man? What you doing, man? I so I thought it would so I thought it would end there, Didi. I thought that's where it would be done. I did. No. It did. Oh no. That is not where it was done. In fact, my man's dance, Bryant says mommy wait hold up shit because i'm about to lose it and i can't lose it because there's bryant there's bryant came back and was basically like bro she married like she don't want you she don't want your kind like like basically like you capping for malika and so first off i just want to say thank you for for holding it down for black women everywhere even Boy. you know i we appreciate we appreciate that chris secondly I work with Malika. I don't know Malika like we ain't best friend. I don't mean I don't know Malika. I know Malika, she knows me. But we ain't like best friends or no shit like that. So I'm not trying to be up here like, Malika, my girl. I don't know her like that. You know what I'm saying? We cool. We see each other in passing. We say, what's up? We was just at Chanae's wedding a couple weeks ago. All of that was great, right? Malika is a, she's a, a little bit. But Malika's a reporter, y'all. She's a reporter. She's not an analyst. She doesn't analyze. She doesn't provide opinions in that way. She's a reporter. She's reporting the news. If it's a news headline, it is her job to report on it. It does. If you don't like it, that's on you. She's a report. She's not Stephen A. She's not Kendrick Perkins. She's not all these people that provides opinions on stories. If a story headline pops up, she provides the facts on it. And the facts are there aren't many facts in this case. So what the hell did you expect her to say? Who, oh, by the way, this shit broke over Thanksgiving break. You think Malika was at the crib on Thanksgiving break thinking, let me go live and talk about this right now. Like, no, they weren't even on air last week. So when was she? Chris. Again, it, it's these. There is not, there is so much <laughs> intelligence lacking um, in Dez's tweet that it, it it should be criminal. And and this is a man who's had a lot of you know stuff going on in, in his history, um, 
you know, as he's growing up. But the fact that he would respond to my tweet saying, she's married, bro. She don't want you. And I actually had somebody comment on my uh, resume reel uh, today about, yeah, she don't want you. It shows you how much men specifically just hate women, and particularly black women. And it's even worse when it's a black man, right? Because from a white man, you you know might expect it more. From a black man who's played the NFL, who's got all this privilege, and you have the nerve to tweet out some dumb shit like that. Where, again, the reason why I tweeted that out, y'all, is because I searched Josh Gideon Des Bryant before that tweet. Nothing came up. Nothing came up. It wasn't like, oh, Josh Giddy is, you know, allegedly a nasty person, whatever, pedophile. The only thing he tweeted in regards to Josh Giddy was, Malika Andrews, how dare you, you know, not say anything? Why are you not speaking up about Josh Giddy? And my thing is, dog, you get your priorities in check. Get Get your head screwed on right and stop looking for things that are not there. The reason I think the reason why people think that Malika Andrews has a thing against black men is because uh, of her relationship, right, with one of her ESPN co-workers who is white. And that just opens up the floodgates. Because I see, we see who she's interested in. And now we see who she's talking about. And Tariq, all she's all she's doing is reporting. And what I really hate is they try to make a a story out of how she reported the Josh Giddy news compared to all the other things with Ime Udoka, Brandon Miller, um, and the other one was, I think, uh, Adrian Payne. They were all the same. The level, it's here are the facts, and 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 that's it. There's there's nothing more. So yeah, I'm look. I may not agree with Malika on different things, but. What I will stand by her with is, or stand for her with is, she is doing her job. There is nothing wrong with how she is reporting the news. And y'all need to keep her name out your damn mouth if you got nothing nice to say and just want to get off a, a ridiculous take. Like, Dee Dee, hey. these athletes, they be bugging. They be bugging. <laughs> bugging. And you put you putting them in. In their place, Chris. I didn't even know. I didn't even know you could do it. Okay. Didi, he went full Draymond. He was like, was yo, like, did oh, full right. Draymond. Like, why he had him in a, and drug him he, in the baseball? He dro- full Draymond. <laughs> I know that's right. I didn't know. But, I mean, I literally, I'm so happy when I saw that, Chris. I can't, I, let's just be, let me be serious for a second. I was like, look at Chris. Like, not him standing on business. Like, I was, I was like, I know that's right. I was, uh, I literally, I will say, I don't really have an opinion about Malika, but I, I do hear a lot about her and, like, the way she reports and who they think she reports for and not for. So, like, I, whenever I do watch her, report like it's it's a report by the way like i feel like we got to emphasize that like i've been on that side of the world where like they give you a paper and it says exactly what you're supposed to talk about and exactly what you're supposed to say like even better there's probably nine times out of ten a teleprompter behind and she's probably reading it like word for word so like i feel like that's something that people are not understanding and they're not taking into consideration so I completely agree with us being upset about like, bro, like calm down. Like she, she's Relax. only doing so much or even better. Like y'all said, we Thanksgiving. That was my biggest thing. I was like, y'all, did we expect yeah. her to just go in her Thanksgiving for this, for Josh Giddy? I, I was like, I, I didn't expect that to happen. I think that's when I read, cause all I saw was Des Bryant's tweet. I sent it to my dad and I was like, whoa, <laughs> he is upset so <laughs> i literally saw it and i was just like so did he think that thanksgiving was gonna be stopped because josh giddy wanted to be a maniac i don't think i don't think he really that's where i was like i don't think his brain was really it wasn't there, there. like it, it wasn't been, there you it wasn't there see anything in that point and i just knew that i was like, okay whenever whenever everybody come back from eating that turkey it'll be back you know it'll come back so like 
I don't know. I feel yeah, like yeah. Des, I, I wasn't a fan of it. I'm a, I'm a huge Dallas Cowboy fan. Anybody that know me knows that I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan. I love Des Bryant. Like, that's just who. But when I saw that, I was like, oh, not you, Des. I used to call him yeah. Des Cake back in the day. So I was like, not Desi, you know? Yeah. That, I don't know. It's, it's, I just think it's so funny how everybody feel like they have a handle on what happens on TV when they have no idea what happens on TV. They think we just get on TV and we just open our mouth and start talking. They have no idea that there are actual other people outside of the folks you see on the screen. There are producers. There are producer assistants. There are directors. There are reasons that we have IFBs in our ears so we can hear what the producers and directors are telling us and guiding us. And yes, you do have some analysts who act as hosts from time to time. My girl, LaChina Robinson is one of them. She is an analyst, yeah. but she acts as a host. So she absolutely provides per- 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 opinions when she's hosting because her primary job is an analyst. Malika's primary job is a reporter. That's what she's been doing forever. Reporters are different. They don't look at the world and produce information the same way as the rest of us. And and, and to be truthful, I really feel like dads and half the other folks supporting him don't watch ESPN for real. Because if you did, you would know every Thanksgiving holiday ain't no program studio shows on. All they're showing are college basketball tournaments. So you're about to get the Battle for Atlantis. You're about to get the Maui Invitational. You're getting all of that. You're not getting any studio programming outside of maybe Sports Center, And you're not getting the main Sports Center anchors because they at home eating too. You're right. getting the fill-ins. Man, are you like, that's just what it is. So y'all need to relax. Calm down. And I'm going to tell you what you can do instead of being angry on social media, Des. What you can do is you can listen to the 3 on 3 pod at iHeartRadio. That's what you can do. You can find us wherever you find your podcast, Des. So no matter what you're doing, no matter where you're listening, you need to tune in to the 3 on 3 pod. That's what you need to be doing. You can also follow us on Twitter at the 3 on 3 pod. Or on Instagram at 3 on 3 Prime. And if you're really feeling froggy, Des, you need to go ahead and check us out on YouTube. Period. 